All right, this is the Odd College Abe Partridge video. So as somebody with a separate visual art and music career, um, what are some similarities in the creative process that you've noticed? And also what are some similarities uh, in the uh, showing of the uh, their respective art forms. Mm. Similarities. I mean, to me, I never, I never really considered a song that I write and a painting uh, to be all that different. Really, you know, kind of. It kind of comes from the same place. Um, <clears throat> I enjoy them. Uh, I enjoy them both. I like I like music that moves people, and I like visual art that moves people. I guess that's uh, in common. But I mean, good night. Does you've you've started off with a real dinger of a question here, Jimmy? Uh, <laughs> I'm. Uh, I don't know, man. I. I the, and similarities, I guess, you know, so a song, I have to, I will tell you this, a song I have to concentrate more. And uh, I really have to like, There, there's a time that goes, uh, that goes into creating a song that uh, it's more of a struggle in, in creating a, str the, a song than it is, you know, with a idea for a, a visual piece of art, you know, just kind of like there's this, there's this spark, and then you like follow that spark until, until you've brought it to fruition. Whereas a song, it's kind of like a thousand sparks, you know. And that's, I guess, that's really not an answer to the question because that's how they're different. But other than, other than in that one ray, really, I guess they're really that's kind of the same to me. I don't know if they come from the same place. You know, yeah. there there doesn't uh, the the similarities kind of write themselves, and the you know the difference yeah. becomes sort of the more apparent thing. That makes well, sense. The, well, they do, man. And I started painting and writing at the same time, so uh, I ne they birthed in my in my life at the same moment. So it was never like I did art and then I wrote, or I wrote and then it was all just it all happened simultaneously. Um, what do you think the underlying reason for writing songs and making art and, and whatnot, what, is there a, you know, is there a, a, an event or something, uh, in your personal psyche or, uh, you know, emotionally that started you to writing songs? And yeah. Making art? Yeah, abs absolutely, man. I was I I know now, like with hindsight, what it was. But what happened was I was um I was I was in a I had made a total chaotic ruin of my life. But when I was about twenty seven, by the time I was twenty seven, I was separated from my family, um, my extended family. I still was with my wife, and I had two children. I had separated myself from nearly every friend and relationship I had outside of uh, one small little group of people, and um, and then and the years of in the years that it took me to do that, then I I, I found uh, myself uh, I found. I found like the uh, the the belief structure and and that I had based a lot of my identity uh, on was beginning to crumble, and um, <clears throat> so I was in a, my my life was chaotic and and uh, art was something that uh, I used to um, try to try to turn something that was really chaotic into something that was beautiful. And I just never quit. Yeah. And I still do that today because 
um, I have the ten- I I can easily fall apart, and I know that about myself now. But I'm 40 years old, but and I didn't know that when I was younger. But now it's it's out of necessity. If I didn't have to do it, I wouldn't. I, yeah, I guess that makes it a you know a sort of a functional mechanism to keep things on track. There, that's a. Uh... Yeah, that that hits pretty close to home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think for a lot of folks. Well, I, I, yeah, I've met a lot of artists who have the same. They might verbalize it a little bit differently, but it really, I think, it all goes back down to that. Yeah, kind of a. I've seen what happens when I don't. Sort <laughs> yeah, of. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Where so you are forty years old and you've been uh, doing. Uh, whatever the creative process is since you were 27. Yeah. Uh, how does your uh, songwriting process differ now from what it was like when you first started? <laughs> Dude, not none. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I like have intentional, I have intentionally not tried to learn technique. I. <clears throat> I was living in Middlesboro, Kentucky in 2000. I was born and raised here, but I was living in Middlesboro, Kentucky in 2007, which was the time when they got high-speed internet. And so uh, that was the first time in my life. I was 27 years old. I got a high-speed internet connection, and and I started finding songs that... Like, uh, you know, I grew up listening to rock and roll, but then I started hearing, like, Towns Van Zant songs and, and, and John Prine songs and Bob Dylan songs. And, and uh, like, whenever at that, that chaotic and agonizing period of my life, when I heard those songs, they resonated me with, with me more than any other art that I had ever experienced in my entire life. And, uh, I mean, they spoke to me at a deep, on a very deep level, even like some of the most horrible shit, you know. Like whenever I heard Towns Van Zandt singing Waiting Around to Die, you know, I was like, that makes that makes really good sense, you know. And um, so I just wanted to do it. So I didn't know how the hell to do it, and I still don't know how the hell to do it, but um, I just started writing songs, you know, and... I did it. I did. I wrote songs from 2007 all the way to 2000 to October of 2015 before I ever played them publicly for anybody. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I played them for years just like to myself and to my wife. But, um, you know, that it's only, it's only been, you know, since 2015 where I started doing it publicly. But, and, you know, I'm supposed to write more because I play more now, but I, man, I just let them come, you know? I don't try to, like, all that stuff where you sit around and try to, like, make stuff happen. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. I mean, maybe, I'm not saying it don't work. It probably does work for people, but it, I, I'm just scared if I learn too much about it, it'll change what I, what I loved about it in the beginning, you know? And like the, I want to stay near the source of uh, of inspiration. And I'm not saying that technique has to take you away from that, but I'm afraid that it would for me. Maybe, maybe some people are probably great at it, but I'm not. I, I'm afraid that I wouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, the same methods don't work for everybody, you know. Yeah, it's, for sure. Um, do you think or feel that your music has kind of an overall message? And if it does, uh, does it fit with your personal ethos? Or do you think uh, one or the other, like which came first, is informed by living in the South? Living in the South. Well, 
I've always lived in the South, so I don't know nothing about living nowhere else. So anything that I do, I guess, would have to be defined as Southern. <laughs> uh, but I don't per se... Um, I mean, the overall message, and I, b I believe it's <clears throat> probably just about uh, honesty and love, probably, and authenticity would probably be the things that I value most in, in my own art and also in the art of other people. In fact, that's what I look for in the art of, of other people, uh, I don't give a shit about genre or nothing, you know. I like music that that I feel is honest and, and authentic and and has love as a, as its center, you know. I I'm not into anything else. Like that's kind of what I'm into. And visual art too, you know. I don't like I like a lot of different kinds of other people's art, but I only like it if I think that it's um, it's r authentic and real, true to itself, you know? I don't know. I mean, that's probably all, like, really words that don't make a lot of sense, but they do to me. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't want to... You know, you don't want to hear a song or, you know, see whatever the medium might be and think that whoever made it is trying to pull the wool over. I can't, I can't listen to the radio, dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm also like an old 40 year old white dude. So, may, you know, but, but I can't listen to the radio because that shit seems fake. It seems like it ain't real. In fact, in fact, I know like the stories behind so many of it. I know it's not real, but. Don't listen to me, but I mean, it's written by a bunch of people that like have artificial intelligence running algorithms on the top 40 hits, and then they spit out like words that you got to use and how many beats per minute. And uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, uh, I don't like that because, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather hear a dude that, or a, or a girl, or I'd rather hear a person that, can't hold a tune that maybe barely can play their instrument but is intensely passionate about what they're doing and is and is creating art that is meaningful from them and it comes from a place of authenticity in their own heart way before I'd rather hear somebody get up and sing some bullshit that they're making up trying to make a dollar or two you know Yeah, there's not a lot of authenticity in formula. 